While discovering the truth of who I was, I was easily able to see the truth in others, outside of who they perceived themselves to be or the potential that they had. Doing the work to accept myself, good and bad, and the honesty that it required, led to a deeper honesty about the truth of the people that I allowed in my life in romantic relationships. Outside of the lie that I told myself about who these people were to me, time just revealed who they really were to me anyway. And I think when we actually decide that we want to do this work to change and heal, we also decide to outgrow a lot of different ideologies and old ways, old boundaries. And this video is a part one of a three video series where I talk about my spiritual journey and the ways that it's affected my romantic relationships. What I'm sharing today is just things that I've noticed over the years of wanting to have a spiritual journey but also navigating my romantic relationships too and hopefully with what i shared today i'm able to be of service to you so please grab a drink of something sit yourself down maybe get in your car and drive if that's where you like listening to your audio but this is going to be completely podcast style i'm going to be looking directly at my notes because i don't want to miss a single thing and there's so much to say so sit down relax and i hope you enjoy this audio let's get started My spiritual journey started with the path of forgiving my parents. I think I realized that in order to truly become the best version of myself, I needed to strip away my upbringing or decisions from the past that left me in a season of victimhood. I had to accept my parents for who they were as humans, trying their best, and unlearn the unconscious acts I would make as a result of someone else's unresolved pain, and just take responsibility. This level of accountability was a tool that affected my romantic relationships because I was able to identify mother and father wounds clearly and how they showed up in men. It's more common to talk about fatherhood wound in women, but what about the ones that show up in men? Or better yet, what about the motherhood wound in men? In my experience with the latter, I often found myself in the orbit of men who loved their mothers but harbored resentment towards them that would eventually transfer to me once the veil was lifted and the comfortability of who they were unconsciously started to show. I never connected well with the term, you showed me who you really are. It's like, no, a person can be many things, and it's just a coincidence that the version that you are experiencing now is just not what you're willing to accept. I wish more people of color communicated clear in the moment. I realized our years of trauma has faltered our communication skills, and we come up with these sayings, and at times where we need the most clear communication, it never happens. And I think that's why we harm each other so dramatically. It's because we don't know how to clearly communicate our pain in order to have healing conversations. It just is what it is, or you show me who you are, or you're charging it to the game. And all of that stuff, that disappointment, the pain that you can't articulate is just rotting inside of you. My story is often the same. In the beginning, they love the way that I carry myself or how nurturing and level-headed or responsible I am. They love the parts that are good in me that benefit them directly. They forget that my packaging of maturity isn't something they can control, so when their toxic behaviors spring up and a conversation is needed to be had, they approach the conversation like one they're having with their mother with a hard head and a closed mind. They are fatigued by the many uncomfortable conversations with their mother that they have no tolerance for growing opportunities with you or the women they claim they want to keep. So the maturity, the structure, the discernment they profess they needed in their life for the future of their own family they one day will make is now the very thing that makes them feel small. And there is often no resolve because that person is not ready for what they want. Simple. 
But because that woman is requiring a version of them that no one else in their life has given them an opportunity to step into or become, a lot of damage is done. So I would be curious about what a man feels about his mother, how a man treats his mother, because any man that feels obligated to punish their mother for genuinely caring for them is just going to seek out punishing you. At first, you're great, but because you're great, they have to make sure they treat you like shit so you won't feel obligated to find better. Especially the man that you're helping or in a partnership with. They will always resent you for being helpful to them because they are ashamed of actually needing the help and that a woman was what got them to their next step or in some ways elevated them mentally or provided their resources. And we as women have to make the choice to wait for the possibility of this person maybe figuring it out or saving yourself and preserving your energy for someone ready for what comes with having an adult woman in their life. I experienced people in my life trying to convince me how great I wasn't just because what I was saying forced them to realize who they were being. It was like because the light of honesty is too bright, they're mad at the person shining it instead of putting their intention on what needs to be worked out or cleaned up. In my opinion, I think men choose younger women most times because those young women aren't aware enough to require them to be men. He gets to punch the time back. You as the young woman aren't looking at him like the woman his age are, so he thinks he has more time to get himself together, but you're just helping him run away from himself. You're his escape from his reality. Any man can fall in love in the midst of an escape, but once you awaken as a woman, you'll have the hard task of playing the waiting game with him too. And it happens in reverse. Some women unwilling to mature for a man with the proper tools to lead her is such a liability for him and for that person that is actually invested in investing the maturity and investing the insight, they have to also make some hard decisions. And it's selfish for us to believe that even the people that we want are supposed to go with us on these journeys spiritually or feel the same ways that we feel or feel as strongly about these things spiritually that happen inside of us. I think I had to grow up to realize like, hey, not everyone is put here on this earth to invest their energy and time in the topics that I'm investing in. And it doesn't make them any less human or any less smart or any less you know, loving, caring, it's just not their journey. And I have to be okay with that enough to make a decision like, okay, can I accept this? Or is it just my time to go elsewhere? And I have the freedom to do that. And it's not fair for me to punish someone in my life, just because as much as I want them to be there and be with me, they are not, do not want to, or have the, capa- uh, the capacity to be. If I can be a sister to you, let me say in my experience, when I was the helpful woman, when I was present to be the photographer, the videographer, the cheerleader, the chef, the open ear, All it did was open the door for the wrong men to treat me like shit. This was a fact to me because when I was in moments of sadness or depression and it was their opportunity to step up in my life for me like I had always done for them, it was always interrupted with how my sadness made them feel, how distracting my pain was for their life. And when they show you that they are not equipped with tools to nurture you through pain, but only love you for who you are when it benefits them, just leave. If they can't see you now enough to have compassion, they definitely won't have it for your children. And as our responsibilities evolve with the progression of life, it's never a happily ever after with someone who can't empathize with you. And if you're someone that's on a spiritual journey and you're looking to be spiritually fed or supported, 
it's very important that we choose wisely who we show our vulnerability with or who we show our vulnerability to. They could use my pain to make themselves feel above me because of all of the great things that I was doing in my life or the milestones that I was excited about reaching that made them feel small. I think when we lose ourselves in romantic relationships, the divine just kind of hangs his head. And instead of having partners as a witness to our lives and the things that makes us special in some way, I personally was looking for someone to come into my life and have their love change me or save me or have their love change my life. I was looking for a man's love to enter my life and mend all of the things that having an absent father broke in me. It was like when the divine realized I was giving a man a power and a place in my life that belonged to him, which is something no human being is ever supposed to carry or able to carry, I would fall on my face and I would then crack open. I was put through these things to bring me closer to the divine, forcing me to have this deeper relationship with the presence. I would be challenged by the complexities of my pain, and in the end, the God of my mind would embrace me afterwards. In my opinion, in my story, I remember once a relationship in my life had solidified after celibacy. I was sleeping in the bed next to my partner, and just as I was slightly becoming awake and conscious, I heard a direct voice in my ear say, we are done. And when I heard it, I felt this slight like abandonment and this sadness of feeling left, and it was real, but then I just eventually drifted back to sleep and I, when I fully woke up, I just went back to my day-to-day -day life. Weeks would pass and I would often be driving in my car and remember this voice and have debates in my mind, like that couldn't have been my higher source, no. The presence that never deserts me, the presence that provides for me, my conqueror, my father, was no longer there. And the more that time passed and the more silent it became, I started to feel like, hey, you know, I've been left before. I would try to brush it off, but in my moments of silence, I would feel the weight of it more and more when my partner and I would argue and I'm searching for answers and I would be left in the silence. When the synchronicities stop, when I actually manifest the things that I've been wanting and I feel the presence is not even there to share my joy with. And that's when I grow angry and I'm like, okay, so you want to leave me to fend for myself like everyone else has. I should have known what getting into a deeper relationship would leave me. You know, this had gone on for an entire year and some change. It wasn't until I realized in my car recently, I want to say like two days ago, that, you know, God didn't abandon me, I abandoned myself. I abandoned who God was making out of me by choosing partnerships where he was not present. I was left in silence, and in my heart I felt maybe it was just so hard for my spiritual father, my heavenly father, to watch. So I hear other voices like, you know, I designed you, I call you by name, I made you in the greatness of all that I am, and how can I witness you allow someone to come into what we have built and completely mistreat you? How could you honor me when you allow someone to see the greatness that I have anointed in you and try to destroy it from the inside out because it exceeds their understanding? How could you say you're mine when, when I gift you the responsibility to nurture the parts of me you allow someone outside of our relationship to soil on it. And my heart completely broke. And I just start crying and crying because it was all true.
I think it's crazy how everything kind of pans out because without doing the poll on YouTube and asking the question, I probably would not have been ready for that type of answer and honesty and truth about who I was in this wanting a romantic relationship, wanting to work, wanting to prove that outside of this this celibacy journey or where I was at spiritually, I was able to still exist in partnership. And I think in my efforts to prove something, it just was not my time. And it wasn't something that I should have been in. And now I'm making my primary focus nurturing the spiritual relationship by more journaling, being around love and developing a meditative schedule that keeps me open to receiving and being spiritually fed because it is obvious that seeking it in a romantic relationship is not the place. In closing, when you finally have the bravery to stand up for yourself and say, this is who I am, this is the journey that I'm on, and the curiosity of following my white rabbit in life spiritually is far more important than someone else's presence in my life romantically, you've already won. I had to be okay with being the weird girl that they experienced because my topics were just too out there at the time or I was just, in a sense, too deep to always have a conversation with. And to be honest, if the weirdo that I am and the things that I've experienced in my life have made it completely impossible for a man to love me, but somehow also in alignment with the entire world to connect with and to build community with, I think I'd much prefer the latter. I wouldn't change a single thing. You know, I'm here to fulfill a purpose. And I'm not 100% on believing that that purpose has something to do with a man or a romantic relationship. Life is so short. So love on people. But also, when the love is no longer there, still love them more intentionally enough to let them leave and find what it truly is that will bring them happiness or bring them joy or bring them in alignment to who they actually want to be in their future. I think that was all that I have for today. Thank you guys so much for liking, commenting, and subscribing. If anything that I said resonated with you, please leave it in a comment down below. I cannot wait to do the second video, part two of this series. Thank you so much for doing the poll. Honestly, without that poll, I probably would not have received the download that I needed to. So I really do appreciate you guys for being honest and just talking and being cool about what you want to hear from me. Um, I will be delivering another video in the next couple of days. Make sure you're looking out for that. Hope to see you guys in my next one. Bye.